season's greetings, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and welcome to Snow Waters Under a Christmas Sky. We have a veritable smorgasbord of musical and poetic delights for you, one for every day of the 12 days of Christmas. And they all have one thing in common, the magic of Christmas. Redden the hearth and sweep the floor. Let the candle light through the pane be shown. Bring sweet well water and leave the door loose on the hasp. For who would be knowing what poor soul, lonely and travelled far, walking the world on the naked highway, might follow the gleam of the candle star and its welcome win in this lonesome byway. So, for sake of two who went out from the city by bridled lanes, down to Bethlehem, and who failed to find there for love or pity a kindly soul who would welcome them. Redden the hearth, let the comfort-sharing glow of the peat fire shine fair and bright, and may a tired poor man and a maiden wearing a mantle of blue be our guests tonight. Here's something you probably didn't know. If you eat a mince pie every day over the 12 days of Christmas, that will guarantee you luck over the next 12 months of the following year. Mmm. One way to get me some more luck. Mm. A 
Like all intelligent people, I greatly dislike Christmas. It revolts me that every man may rifle his neighbour's pockets under cover of a ghastly general pretense of festivity. It is really an atrocious institution, this Christmas. We must be gluttonous, because it is Christmas. We must be drunken, because it is Christmas. We must be insincerely generous. We must buy things that nobody wants and give them to people we don't like. We must go to absurd entertainments that make even our little children satirical. We must writhe under venal officiousness from legions of freebooters, all because it is Christmas. That is, because the mass of the general population, including the all-powerful middle-class tradesmen, depend on a week of license and brigandage, waste and intemperance, to clear off its outstanding liabilities at the end of the year. As for me, I shall fly from it all tomorrow or next day, to some remote spot miles from a shop, where nothing worse may befall me than a serenade from a few peasants, or some other equally harmless survival of medieval mummery, shyly proffered, not advertised, moderate in its expectations, and soon over.
Yes, the newspapers were right. Snow was general all over Ireland. It was falling softly upon the Bog of Allen and further westwards, softly falling into the dark, mutinous Shannon waves. It was falling, too, upon every part of the lonely churchyard where Michael Fury lay buried. It lay thickly drifted on the crooked crosses and headstones, on the spears of the little gate, on the barren thorns. His soul swooned slowly as he heard the snow falling faintly through the universe and faintly falling, like the descent of their last end upon all the living and the dead. Everybody loves a Christmas dinner, right? Especially that magnificent centerpiece, the turkey. But that wasn't always the case. Goose and beef were more popular. Until, that is, Henry VIII introduced it to the Christmas table. But it didn't really catch on until after World War II. Now, let's talk sprouts. Those little mini cabbages. Very divisive, I know. But let me tell you, each little sprout contains as much vitamin C as an orange. So, whether you like them or not, kids, they're good for you even if they do sometimes smell like feet.
Remember the white goose in my arms, a present still. I plucked the long flight feathers down from the breast, finest fuzz from underneath the wings. I thought of you through the operation and covered the unmolested head, the pink eyes that had persisted in an expression of disappointment. It was right to hesitate before I punctured the skin, made incisions and broached with my reluctant fingers the chill of its intestines. Because surviving there, lodged in the tract, nudging on the bruise of the orifice, was the last egg. I delivered it like clean bone, a seamless cranium. Much else followed, which for your sake I bundled away, burned on the fire, with the head, the feet, the perfect wings. The goose was ready for the oven. I would boil the egg for your birthday, conserve for weeks the delicate fats, as in the old days. In the meantime, we dismantled it, limb by limb. Who doesn't love an old carol, eh? But they weren't always about Christmas. No, they go back thousands and thousands of years to pagan times, and they were songs about every season of the year. But only the winter ones survived and adapted. And you thought it was all about Cliff Richard. No, it just seems that way. It's coming on Christmas They're cutting down trees They're putting love reindeer And singing songs of joy and peace I wish I had a river I could skate away on But it don't snow here It stays pretty green I'm gonna make a lot of money and then I'm gonna quit this crazy scene I wish I had a river I could skate away on Oh, I wish I had a river so long I would teach my feet to And I'm sad now I've gone and lost the best baby that I ever had Oh, I wish I had a river I could skate away on Oh, I wish I had a river so long I would teach my feet to Setting out in darkness this Christmas Eve, I find the countryside is brewing mist in all its hollows. Out of it, the wet lane unravels, hatches every yard, a tree, a fence, the full outline of fields. My way is to the shop to buy matches. Beyond the hedge, the black shapes of cattle trampling mud holes shadow me to the road. I cannot see their smoky breath, but 
feel its warmth. If there be stars among the sights the mist has hidden, good, enough for now to make my journey following cottage lights. Once upon a time there were three sisters living in absolute penury. Things were looking bad for Christmas. But on Christmas Eve they hung their stockings up upon the mantelpiece ready to dry for Christmas Day. A passing figure known for his generosity knew of the sisters plight and decided to drop three bags of gold down the chimney to help them have a Merry Christmas. A bag landed in each stocking and a tradition was born. That generous man was known as St. Nicholas. We know him as Santa Claus or Father Christmas. Have yourself a merry little Christmas May your heart be light From now on our troubles will be out of sight Have 
Have yourself a merry little Christmas Make the Yuletide gay From now on our troubles will be miles away Here we are in our golden days Happy golden days of your Faithful friends who are near to us Gather near to us once more Through the years we all will be together If the fates allow Hang a shining star Upon the highest bough Here we are in a golden days Happy golden days of your Faithful friends who are near to us Gather near to us once more Through the years we all will be together if the fates allow Then hang a shining star upon the highest bow And have yourself a merry little Christmas now Have yourself a merry little Christmas now. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, here we are, but a tinsel's breadth away from Christmas, and it's time to bid you farewell. We hope you've enjoyed our little selection box of festive treats, and we wish you health, mirth, and cheer. Merry Christmas, and Happy New Year.
The play is done. The curtain drops, slow falling to the prompter's bell. A moment yet the actor stops and looks around to say farewell. It is an irksome word and task, and when he's laughed and said his say, he shows as he removes the mask a face that's anything but gay. One word ere yet the evening ends, let's close it with a parting rhyme and pledge a hand to all young friends as fits the merry Christmas time. On life's wide scene, you too have parts that fate ere long shall bid you play. Good night, with honest, gentle hearts, a kindly greeting go all way. My song, save this, is little worth. I lay the weary pen aside and wish you health and love and mirth, as fits the solemn Christmas tide. As fits the holy Christmas birth, be this, good friends, our carol still, be peace on earth, be peace on earth, to men of gentle will.